Hey, what's up guys? This is Dyla, and in this video, I'm going to unbox and review the Elecam 360 with extra bonus accessories, like a 32 gigabyte card and a special flexible tripod. So let's start the video. So this is a version that includes a small special flexible tripod and the quality is actually pretty good and it is very convenient to use together with the camera. On the top of the box we see a picture of the camera and the Elephone logo. On the side we see some of the features and specifications like support for Wi-Fi and it will also work fine with a 128GB micro SD card, 32GB is actually not the limit. The resolution is full HD with 30 frames per second, which sounds good when you hear it, but for 360 degree videos, this is actually pretty low. So let's open the box. First we see the camera, very compact with a nice design. And the first impression is good, because the build quality seems to be fine. Here you see it from different sides. And in the top we find three control buttons with a LED indicator and a small display. So extra included this version is also a 32GB micro SD class 10 card from Elephone. Some standard accessories like a helmet and bicycle holder. Micro USB cable to charge. 3M sticker, buckle and an English user manual and last a small pin that can be used in the reset hole. The first thing you should do on your smartphone is to install the Elecam 360 app from the Play Store. There are also some few instructions about that in the user manual. After it is installed, it is ready to be connected over Wi-Fi with the camera. Let me now remove the plastic from the display, so we can have a better look. You press and hold the power button down for some few seconds and it will turn on. You here see it says no card and it shows the battery status, date and clock. On the bottom side you can open a small flap and here insert your micro SD card. Let's have another look and now it will show the remaining time left for video recordings on the card. With one click on the power button you can switch between 360 video or 360 picture mode. With the red shutter button you can then directly start the recording. With one tap on the Wi-Fi button you activate the Wi-Fi in the camera. And here you see the default code which of course also can be changed to something else. After that you take your smartphone and connect to the Elecam 360 Wi-Fi signal. When you hold the Wi-Fi button down, you access a menu with different settings, like for example, power saving, date, language, system and format. If the camera for some unknown reason should freeze, you can reset the camera using the reset hole and the small pin included. Unfortunately, the battery cannot just be removed, so that is the only way to reset it. When you take pictures, you can see them remote live on the smartphone with the Elecam 360 app. Here they will be displayed as a huge ball, where you can also zoom in. You can also switch to VR mode, if you want to use Google Cardboard glasses or something similar. Of course, the phone then also has to support gyroscope and have the required sensor built-in. In the top you find some few controls and also one that can brighten up the picture a little bit. So this is how a converted 360 picture looks like on the phone when it is just plain. If you want to upload it to for example Facebook, then on the computer you need to edit the information stored in the picture. So the camera model is set to Ricoh as you see here. 
It can be edited with a free tool that I will provide a link to below in the description. After that you can go to Facebook and upload the picture and it will be displayed as a 360 picture for your friends and they can look around in all directions. This will also work on the PC but only with Chrome or the Firefox browser. 360 videos from the Alacam must also be converted on the PC using the Alacam 360 video converter. After that you can directly upload it to YouTube and you will have a full 360 degree moving video. It's very funny but I must say that the quality is not overwhelming, almost like watching a 360p video on YouTube, but I guess that is what you get for the price. For a start it's okay, but it's nowhere near the one from Samsung. The best effect and quality is actually achieved if you just place the camera and only let the surroundings move. Instead of moving the camera around all the time, because that can also afterwards be a bit confusing for the viewer when watching the video in 360. And then now to my personal pros and cons. So the pros are that it has a nice and compact design, a built-in small display with easy controls, and that 360 videos can be used on YouTube and Facebook. The Wi-Fi and app control is nice, and this version came with bonus stuff like a stand and a 32GB microSD. So for the price it is a nice beginner 360 camera. The cons are clearly the picture quality which could be much better. It is not good enough for professional use and after some use it gets really hot and that can result in that the camera can freeze which is a bit annoying. Also videos and pictures have to be converted on the PC before they can be used online. And last, videos are recorded only in MOV and not MPEG-4. Overall, I can still recommend this camera for users who want to try out a cheap 360 camera that is easy to use. So thank you for watching and I hope to see you in my next video.